hello everyone welcome back again to my youtube channel my name is osereme if you see me for the first time thank you so much for stopping by hit on the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell if you are interested in everything sewing tutorials and pattern drafting now in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you how i made this cute top that i'm putting on right now i absolutely love how this came out and i love the fact that you can wear it with either a skirt or a trouser so it's absolutely versatile this is a simple crop top with a bell sleeve that has a v-shape at the end as you can see so if you're interested in learning how to make this keep on watching and if you're still here to subscribe please please hit on the subscribe button and let's get started with the tutorial so guys this is the fabric i'm going to be using to make this top if you want to make the top and the skirt you will need at least three yards but if you're only going to be making the top two yards of fabric or what are the half yards should be enough depending on your size so because this fabric is very colorful i'm going to be drafting the pattern on my pattern paper because i want the lines to show very properly so i'm going to go ahead and draw a straight line across the top of this pattern paper this is going to be serving as my shoulder line now guys from the shoulder line here i'm going to come in by how deep i want my neckline to be how wide sorry and i want it to be three inches wide so i came in by three inches and i'm going to go down by three and a half inches now this neckline you'll notice that is very high but if you want yours to be wider and deeper please go ahead and add more inches so as you can see i'm going to be using my curve to create a round neckline here again from the center of this paper here i'm going to go in on the shoulder line by half of my shoulder measurement i marked it here and from that point i came down by one inch for my shoulder slope and from this one inch i came down by i'll connect a line to meet the top of my neckline so this is going to be the shoulder slope now from the first line we have from the shoulder line i measure down 10 inches which is my bust point and then i'm marking 17 inches which is the length i want this top to be remember it is a crop top now i'll go ahead and use my ruler to connect these lines across the length of the top is totally dependent on you and what you want you can actually make it way longer than what i have here now at the top of the shoulder slope you are going to measure down the measurements you are going to be taking here for your armhole is to divide your bust measurement by six and whatever you get add 1.5 to it when i calculated that i had seven inches so that's what i marked here and i'm drawing this seven inches line across so this is going to be seven as our chest line now i'll connect a line from the top of my shoulder slope now to meet the chest line just like you see me doing like this now you will take a measurement from the top of your shoulder slope to the chest line what you have there go ahead and use your tape to just divide it into two equal halves and make a point here okay now from this point go in by half of an inch now once you're through with that you're going to come down to this chest line and divide your bust measurement into four and make a point now we'll be connecting these three points here the shoulder here to the point in the middle here and from this point in the middle i'll connect to the chest line so this is going to give me a very nice armhole now i'm going to add my body measurements to this pattern so on this chest line we already marked it but mark your bust measurement divided by four make it more visible and i'm going to add one inch for ease this is not stitching allowance here this is for ease because this fabric is not going to have a zipper this top i mean so i need it to be free on my body now on this end of the blouse instead of using my waist measurement divided by four i'm using my bust measurement divided by four okay so i made that mark there and what i'm going to do now is to join the one on the armhole area to the one around the waist so this is basically all for the drafting of this simple top um as it as i've already said i've not added any stitching allowance yet what i only added is ease so that this top will be able to pass through even though we don't have a zipper on it so this is um what i have this is the pattern for the blouse i'm going to go ahead and use this pattern right here to cut out on my actual fabric both the front and the back are going to have the same neckline 
so guys this is what i had after cutting on fabric like i said before front and back has the same neckline you can see i added half an inch stitching allowance to this area one inch here and one inch here this one inch is for me to be able to stitch it up here and the extra one inch on this side is for me to stitch in the sides you will also notice that i didn't add stitching allowance to the neckline and the armhole area this is because this neckline as you can see is already very small so i don't want a situation whereby it to be too small by the time i add extra stitching allowance so i will take allowances from this neck right here that will make it bigger okay now for the armhole i normally don't like to add stitching allowance to my armhole now for the sleeve this is a basic sleeve pattern we're going to be using this basic sleeve pattern to cut out this bell sleeve on my fabric this fabric here has already been folded into four because I want to cut out the two sleeves together. So as you can see, I'm placing this basic long sleeve on my folded piece. Like I said before, it's folded into four. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this on this piece of fabric that I have here. And we're just going to alter this pattern a little bit to get our bell sleeve. So the first thing I'm going to do is to measure from the center of my sleeve i came out by i measured 12 inches now you can measure more depending on how wide you want this your sleeve to be for this particular one i'm using 12 inches so i came out by 12 inches instead of marking exactly on the pattern paper i came down by one inches so i just use that for stitching allowance you can make it smaller if you want to but 12 inches is perfect now at this armhole area i'm going to come out by one inch my chalk is faint because it's yellow but i came out by one inch here because i've not added stitching allowance to this piece now from this one inch i came out by at this top i'm going to connect a slanted line all the way to meet the 12 inches that i came out by earlier um when we we're drafting this pattern okay can you see so go ahead and do this and this is just basically how to draft out a bell sleeve now I'm going to go ahead and cut this out first before I show you guys how to get the V effect you see on the sleeve. Now guys, to get the V shape that we have on the sleeve we are trying to replicate, I am going to come up by one and a half inch. One and a half inch, okay? So I'm coming up by one and a half inch from this center of my sleeve right here. It's right here, not the first line. So from this one and a half inch point, I'm going to connect a slant to meet the end of my sleeve. If you want it to be more V, you can go up by two inches or two and a half inches. Two and a half inches should be the highest you should go so that it will not be too much. But what I used here is one and a half inch. And as you can see, I just cut it out. So guys, this is basically all for the drafting of the bell sleeve. You can see how easy it is. Now this is the bodies. This is the body parts that we already drafted out before and i told you guys earlier that the front and the back are going to be exactly the same thing and there's no we're not going to have any dots on this so these are the two pieces for the front and the back we are going to go ahead now and use a bias tape to pipe the neckline so i'll bring a bias tape like this and go ahead and you can first of all pin it all the way around the neckline you will make a first stitch on the bias you first of all stitch this all the way around like this and then after which you will fold it up like this to pipe the neckline so i'm going to go ahead and do this for the both necklines so guys this is what i had after i was done piping the neckline for both the front and the back is exactly the same thing so now i'm pinning the armhole areas together for both the front and the back part pieces as you can see you can decide not to pin this down and just go straight to your sewing machine and stitch it actually but let's just pin it down for the purpose of this tutorial so i'll go ahead and stitch this place and this place with half an inch stitching allowance so guys this is what i had after i was done stitching it up here we basically joined the two pieces together if you open it up you can see the two pieces are now one now i'm going to go ahead and add the sleeves so we bring in the sleeve since our sleeve is already ironed it's going to be very easy for us to get the middle of the sleeve so i'm going to be facing the right side of the sleeve to the right side of my fabric this fold here is the center of my sleeve i'll be placing it right on the or the place where i joined my two um, pieces together because that's the center of my shoulder 
so i'm just going to go ahead and pin this sleeve all around the armhole so many times that i miss you i know how to call when i want to now you got way bigger issues now i'm going to head over to the sewing machine and make a stitch here and do the same thing for the other sleeve so guys this is what the sleeve is looking like right now i'm just a little loving how this is coming out after i was done stitching down the sleeve you can see what i have so now i'm going to go ahead and finish up the end of this sleeve by just folding it in like this i'll do the same thing for the other side and once i'm through folding it in i'm going to go ahead and stitch down the sides so i'll be stitching down the sides from here all the way to the end of the blouse with one inch that i gave a stitching allowance i'll do the same thing for the other side and finally i will hem the end of the blouse so guys this is the final look of my top after i was done making it i'm super super proud of how this came out and i love the v shape that i had at the end of the sleeve it's actually very nice and it looks better when i put it on so this uh, video that i have here they will do justice to the blouse when i put it on so this is a skirt i made in my last tutorial that had a ruffle at the end i went ahead to remove the ruffle so that i will have exactly what is in this picture so thank you so much for watching this video today if you are yet to subscribe please hit on the subscribe button and i'll be seeing you guys in my next one bye